everyone, and welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be here with us. Uh, we think that we've put together a stellar lineup of fantastic people who are having a tremendous impact in the Cape Ann community, and we can't wait for you to hear from them. Um, I am Emily. I am a member of the Regional Advisory Board, uh, which is part of the broader United Way. Um, our task at hand is to lift the voices of the United Way and ensure that it's doing the targeted work that it needs to for the communities of the North Shore, specifically Massachusetts Bay and Merrimack Valley. Um, all our mission is, is really to increase the capacity of what the United Way does and make sure that we're creating positive lasting changes in the lives of children, young people, families, and everyone who needs an extra helping hand. Um, I would just like to encourage everyone who is here, if you haven't already, to please put your name and um, if you are able to do the organization and, or company that you're representing, we'd love to hear where people are zooming in from and um, maybe you'll recognize some faces or names or organizations when you populate that little, um, that little bar there. And before we dive into our deeper work, I just wanna say that um, I know this personally, the United Way and our regional advisory board on the North Shore, um, we are always looking for motivated, thoughtful, compassionate people who want to be part of the solution. Um, so if this sparks something in you and you think that you wanna learn more or do more or be a part of more, please reach out and let us know. I know that you have contact information for Jess and Sarah. Um, or shoot us a message in the text chat. Um, you can think about participating in the board. We have a, an exciting fundraiser coming up in June, which will be one of our first in-person events in a long time called the Drive to Thrive Golf Tournament. And that will be up in um, Hamilton at Myopia Golf Club. Anyway, at this point, I would like to turn it over to the amazing Sarah Bartley, who is a tremendous woman. And I think that you'll know that when you hear from her, um, she has miles and miles of heart. And I think to know her is to have incredible respect for the work that she does at United Way. Um, she's been part of the organization for eight years and she's just worked tires tirelessly as a community impact leader for the North Shore, for Cape Ann. Um, she knows the people who are speaking on the panel today and they are here because they respect her and they know that she's part of the work that they're doing. Um, so Sarah, please take it away and let everyone hear how fantastic you are and all of these wonderful things that are going on just, just I, down the street from us that we may not already know about. Thanks so much, Emily. It's really nice to be here with everybody. And that's really a warm uh, welcome. Thank you really kindly for that. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share. My favorite thing actually about my job at the United Way is when I get the opportunity to connect people. And that's how I think about this session today is really the opportunity to connect folks in the community with work that's happening on the ground that I respect and appreciate and I think is doing really good work. And so um, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I have so much enjoyed watching this collaboration come together. Um, so, you know, coming out of, I think, the COVID-19 pandemic, I think all of us find ourselves thinking more about the word resilience. You know, how do we build a resilient community? Um, you know, it doesn't mean that all issues and problems are solved, right? A resilient community is not necessarily a utopia, um, but, you know, it means that we, a resilient community is one where we invest in the kind of um, leadership that can solve problems when they do arise, right? Um, so what kind of leadership do we need as a community to be resilient? Um, I think it means, yes, recovering, you know, from the widespread impacts of COVID, um, but we know that pandemics, they really do tend to split us uh, on our existing fault lines. And so for me, a big takeaway from the last 14 months has been really focusing in on the really deeply rooted challenges um, that COVID has intensified, issues of edu educational access and equity um, and housing justice. And so these are the things that, you know, I know I'm really eager to work on as we think about building a more resilient community. Um, and we think about what kind of leadership it takes uh, to build a resilient community. And, and when I think of that, I, I definitely think of this group. Um, you know, as we work towards resilience and educational access and equity, we want to bring forward this, co uh, this collaboration that we're going to tell you about today. Um, our goal today is to lift up just the lessons that this team has been learning from a couple of years of working together 
Um, we hope that you'll walk away having a sense of how resilience is built over time and really how you can connect with an amazing group of, of leaders who are really courageously venturing out together uh, to ensure that all youth graduate with a career track that's gonna pay them a living wage. Um, that's, that's why I'm here and I hope that's why all of you are here. Uh, the local collaboration that we're lifting up today is the Cape Ann Young Adult College and Career Collaborative. Um, it's been led by Wellspring House with the support of United Way really standing beneath and behind and also alongside. <laughs> so as a mobilizer, but also as a partner around the table through our AmeriCorps program. Um, so we have a lot more uh, on that and, and sort of who's involved um, and what we've been doing to come. Um, but first, we wanted to hear from all of you. So I would ask um, our host today, whose name is Robin, everybody uh, can say hi to Robin. You're not on camera, but Robin, we're all saying hi to you. Thanks for hosting. So Robin, would you open up the first poll? Um, as, we, uh, as we launch into our conversation today, we wanna ask all of you really um, to think about yourself. What, has, what was your biggest source of support or influence for you in getting your first career? So you should see a poll pop up. We would ask that you would um, go ahead and click on it. Um, what was your biggest source of support or influence in getting into your first career? And as soon as we get some solid uh, participation in that, we can go ahead and we'll share the results in a minute or two, but we're gonna give people a, a couple of minutes to complete it. Thanks for your responses, keep them coming. These are great, thanks very much. They're still moving, so I'm just gonna give them another minute. And then the second question, how have you supported youth college and career readiness in your community? So, um, you know, we know that some of you are already involved in a lot of different ways. So thanks for your responses to that one as well. So Robin, it looks like it's slowed down. Why don't we go ahead and, and share the results if we can? So, you know, I'm really, you know, I, I love doing these questions. Um, it sounds like the biggest source of support or influence that you all experienced was the support of your parents and caregivers. Um, that's not surprising to me, right? Um, our parents play an incredibly significant role in our lives. Um, but it looks like additionally, ad other adult mentors uh, were really critical. And that's something that, you know, I think is, it, we probably see in a lot of communities, right? I see that in a lot of communities. A lot of people also tell us that their ability to get a first job pointed them in the right direction. Um, but it looks like we can't underestimate the role of parents, caregivers, and other adults in our lives um, in terms of pointing us towards our career and helping us prepare us for a, a career uh, potential. And then when we ask you what you've, you've been doing in the community, it looks like you're doing exactly that, right? You are getting behind students um, by mentoring young people, whether formally or informally, both are really important. Um, so I wanted to just acknowledge and affirm how important all of these things are uh, to young people, that college and career access is really not the job of one organization or our community colleges or our public schools. It's a shared uh, responsibility of all of us in a, in a resilient community. So I wanted to start by just um, acknowledging that that's true um, and that all of you are already contributing and being part of the solution. Um, so we can close up that poll. Um, and thank you all for participating in it. Um, so I wanted to pull up, I'm gonna pull up just a couple introductory comments and then we're gonna move into uh, hearing from our panel without much further ado, I promise. Uh, so let me just share a couple of introductory comments with all of you. Um, so here today, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the Cape Ann Youth uh, or Young Adults College and Career Collaborative. But I wanted to, before we um, jump into that, I wanted to acknowledge that uh, this group was, init was initially funded uh, by the Tribute Fund, which is um, a legacy fund of the North Shore United Way that was started a number of years ago in honor of six uh, leaders in their community who really cared passionately about youth. Um, and when they all passed away in fairly rapid succession, one uh, particular year, the North Shore United Way 
uh, launched a tribute funding opportunity. A uh, number of donors contributed in significant ways. Um, and so I wanted to honor that we wouldn't be here today uh, without in part these folks' legacies, their, uh, their, their lives and their legacies and their investments. So while we're talking about being a resilient community uh, with the shared res uh, responsibility for youth, I would be wrong not to acknowledge these folks and their significant contributions. Um, so we'll just take a moment to do that. So the next thing I wanted to do um, is just tell you a little bit of the story of how this particular collaborative um, came, came together. Um, back in 2015 or 2016, United Way and Wellspring House uh, connected about that tribute fund opportunity. Uh, Wellspring at the time was successfully running an education and career navigation program for adults, uh, which created individualized education plans that would help uh, adults to navigate the world of career pathways, job training, and opportunities um, with the goal of helping them navigate to jobs that would pay a living wage. Um, but one of the things they observed is by the time folks made it to the program, they had perhaps spent years make, not making a living wage and accumulating the, the kind of impacts of that, right, to their credit, to their housing. Um, and so Wellspring was wanting to look upstream. Um, and the Tribute Fund became an opportunity for that with its express goal of launching innovative youth programming. So the big question is, what if we could start sooner? Um, in 2016, at the time, I actually pulled this, this quote, um, this is 2016 quote, directly from their application to the Tribute Fund back in 2015, 2016. Um, a third of Gloucester High School graduates were self-reporting, no next career step after graduation. Um, and the picture was much worse for the students that schools um, bucket into the economically disadvantaged category. Um, uh, half of those graduates were graduating without um, a plan for their next steps. Um, and so we know that they, um, that's a big challenge, right? They are likely to experience um, a, a lifetime of, of um, adversity that would be different than if they had that career trajectory, right? And that kind of coaching that would support them. Um, and so the Tribute Fund supported this program in taking on youth. Um, so we supported uh, Wellspring in taking on youth as a focus for their navigation program and working directly with Gloucester High School. Uh, in the first few years of successful programming, together we observed um, that a number of new career training opportunities had opened in Cape Ann. Um, this is a community that we're, we're talking about, the Cape Ann community. Um, and a number of new programs had opened, uh, but the stat wasn't coming down at that population level. And in fact, there were career training programs that had open seats, right? So you would expect to see if there's a need for programming in the community and open seats, that those seats would be filled, but they, they weren't necessarily all rapidly filling. Um, so what we recognized was that what we needed was a coordinated movement, um, one that could really build a bridge for youth into effective career preparation. Um, so with more funding for the trip from the Tribute Fund, Wellspring gathered all the programs uh, on Cape Ann with a, a stake in youth college and career readiness and brought them to the table as the Cape Ann Young Adult College and Career Collaborative. This group launched with a collective action approach. Um, that means they organized themselves into teams and uh, recruited, recruited a shared pipeline uh, of young people to begin working on um, aggregating and growing career pathways and opportunities for those youth, but also um, a shared mandate. They had a shared mandate, right? A shared um, a, a pipeline of students they could learn from. They could learn from each other's work. They could learn from the specific challenges those young people in the pipeline were facing and then adapt their programs, right? So that they had a shared mutual agenda where they're learning from each other and developing programs to meet the very real need in the community. So I wanna highlight just the, the cross-sector organizations that were at the table by their role. Um, so Wellspring was established as the backbone organization uh, convening the kayak. Uh, meeting. So Cape Ann Young Adult um, <laughs> Collaborative, short, uh, we will call it Kayak from now on. Um, so uh, Wellspring was convening the Kayak, convenes the Kayak meetings um, and organizes the working groups, provides the coaching um, for the shared pipeline of students. Um, United Way sits at the table uh, representing its own AmeriCorps program, which places um, AmeriCorps fellows in our public schools, as well as community organizations, um, to support multilingual uh, or English language learners, uh, students whose first language is not English. Um, also at the table, Action Inc. with its alternative high school program, uh, uh, the school guidance departments uh, obviously also have direct access to students while they're in school. Um, 
we had organizations providing internships, wraparound supports. Um, so you can see some of them uh, listed uh, here. Organizations providing learning experiences included Project Adventure, um, the Gloucester Health Department, the Drop-In Center, key to like really engaging youth uh, where they are um, and having a voice in the Collective Impact Initiative. Um, and then Leap for Education, the Keep Ann Chamber, and our great um, job training programs, college and career training programs, Gloucester Biotech Academy, North Shore Community College, The Open Door, um, have all been fabulous partners. Of course, many of them also provide various wraparound supports, which are really important um, as well, uh, though we don't have time to necessarily go into every single last um, uh, activity that they do together. These are gonna be the people you're gonna hear from today. They're here to share with you what they've learned from two years of working together um, in an intentionally collaborative manner. So with a shared agenda, a set of mutually reinforcing activities, um, they're gonna share what they've learned about how to best support young adults, particularly coming out of COVID, um, the challenges that young adults are actually facing, because I think we all wanna know um, what challenges are young adults actually facing and how we can all uh, participate in empowering them to take leadership in the community around these issues. Um, we wanna hear how this group has expanded career opportunities for young adults locally. Um, and that's all a really big agenda. So at this point, I will stop giving introductory comments though I could talk forever. And I wanna introduce our panel. Um, so give me just a second to go ahead and introduce our, uh, and bring up our panel. Let's see, we're gonna go to, oops, I'm sorry. We are gonna go to Laura. First, Laura, I'm trying to find you. Here you are. Let me just pin Laura. All right, Laura, we're going to go to you first. And I'm going to go ahead. You can go ahead and unmute. Uh, we'd love to hear from you first. Um, as the convener, could you share a little bit more about Kayak? Great. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Emily. Um, we're so appreciative of the tribute fund, not only for the financial support but also walking with us arm in arm, um, you know, suggesting, offering support, offering resources of other kinds as well. So without that, this wouldn't really have been possible. And I'm Maura Padone, I'm the Director of Career Pathways at Wellspring House here in Gloucester. And as Sarah mentioned, we had started a mentoring program at Wellspring initially for adults, 18 years and older to help people find jobs, find a pathway to post-secondary education, all of the above. And Kayak was started two years ago from based on feedback from the community that young people were not ready to be successful in school or careers. And so what can we do to help them be more successful? So we're approaching our second year anniversary. It's hard to imagine. Um, we work with youth and young adults 16 to 24. That's actually expanded recently due to, again, some collaborative um, efforts. I'll talk a little bit, and, and um, Joanne Levitt will as well, about um, the response to the guidance counselors from Manchester, Essex, Rockport, and Gloucester, and how the needs, especially during the needs of young people, especially during the pandemic, had changed. And we really pivoted to meet those needs. We work with the Cape Ann Chamber on jobs. This group was really an offshoot of the Chamber's Business Education Collaborative, which has been in existence for about 12 or 14 years. Um, we also maintain a, a um, young person friendly jobs list. And I really love the idea of a pipeline. When Kayak started, we created four subcommittees. One of the most active ones was a referral subcommittee where the guidance counselors and Nikki Marin, you know, my partner from um, Action Inc., um, students would be referred into Kayak and would be referred to one of two pathways. If they were in school and scheduled to graduate, or if they had graduated and still needed some support or help, they would be referred to Wellspring to the mentoring program. If they were out of school, dropping out of school, they would be referred to Compass, which Nikki will speak more about, which is Action's um, high side preparation program. So let's move on to the next slide. Thank you. Um, why? You know, the need was in 2019, Gloucester Education, Gloucester Health, oh my goodness, 
Gloucester High School has historically had a higher than average graduation rate compared to the rest of Massachusetts. In 2019, it was 92%. In, this, in Massachusetts, it was about 90%. 32% of Gloucester High grads do not pursue post-secondary education. The average in Massachusetts is 18%. There are a few reasons for that. There are not a lot of conversations. When we talked about you know, the results of the poll earlier that parents and caregivers were people that young, you know, um, young people went to or received suggestions from, that is not happening on Cape Ann as much. There are not a lot of conversations with young people outside of school about plans after graduation. And then very high, 62% of economically dis disadvantaged Gloucester High grads did not pursue post-secondary education. And we know that college grads face less of a risk of unemployment and earn, can earn 40% more. So the response was to form this collaborative. We convene the group monthly. So we've been meeting monthly for two years. We actively sought input from young people because, and part of the input was, we don't want you adults telling us yet another thing to do, we should do. So we got some input from young people. We've been able to use, and we are using some of the funds from the Tribute Fund for leadership training and Joanne will talk about that with the Leap for Education internship program. Um, this year with the pandemic, we shifted the need from looking at post-secondary success. That's always a need. We're not totally shifted away from that. But what the guidance counselors told us was that their main job this past year was keeping young people upright and young people need something to do. They need something to connect with they need internships, they need mentoring. So we shifted our focus to really grow that program. And we identify at-risk students. We create awareness of available supports in the community. There are lots of supports in the community. How do we make young people aware of them? One of my favorite things about Kayak is that any type of, I'll say competition between fellow um, agencies, community agencies, really does not exist here for the most part. We, we, we cross-refer, you know, among the group to each other, and it's, it's been working really well. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Some of the things that we've done. At Gloucester High School in the 2019-2020 school year, we are embedded, one of my colleagues and I, in a senior English class at Gloucester High School. It's called Reading and Writing Beyond High School. These students are students that are not in the college track. And again, not having conversations at home about plans after high school. And these are the students that are usually not seeking out their guidance counselor for help. North Shore Community College and Salem State as well do on-the-spot enrollment events at Gloucester High School. We were involved with those, letting students know we are available, we can help you through financial aid applications, college applications, et cetera, because not everybody or their family has the wherewithal to support them through that. Kayak referred um, 18 students to Wellspring, some ready to engage, some not, and we um, lobbied and through North Shore Community College, who's an incredibly strong partner with us, they were able to get funding last year. And even in the pandemic, I'm getting ahead of myself here a little bit, I get excited about it. Um, we had 11 students enrolled in a um, Understanding Higher Ed, which is an early college um, program. It was at Gloucester High School until the pandemic, and then it, um, it was remote. And even then, seven students completed it, which was considering the chaos during the transition to virtual learning, that was pretty amazing. And last year, one of the first things I was gonna talk about was a student that we had from a couple of years ago in the, the senior English class came back, actually she graduated three years ago, she came back about two years ago and said, 
you know what, like I've been waitressing with my mom. My mom doesn't think I need to go to college. She wants me to stay here and work with her, but I really want to go to college. I want to get into psychology. So we were able to work with her, um, pair her with a mentor, and she's entering her third semester at North Shore Community College, doing really well. And it's just really heartening to see those successes. So that particular year we had on the, the Wellspring track, we had a total of 81 non-duplicated students. In the reading and writing class, we also have implemented and continued to do a deeper dive with this, but met one-to-one -one mentoring with the students in that class. Compass in that year um, served an additional 33 non-duplicated young people. And I know Nikki will talk about because of the pandemic, what the numbers are looking like now. Okay, let's go to the next slide. And this picture, let me, let's go back there for one second. That picture was um, the October 2019 Compass um, graduating class. What we're doing now, we're expanding Leap for Education's internship mentorship program to 30 plus. At the latest count, we had 35. Usually the goal was 20 students. So we've really, implemented some stretch goals this year, which we're, and we're meeting them. Um, watch out what you ask for, we're getting it, uh, which is awesome. We're shifting the focus again, thanks to the request of guidance to more internships and mentorships. We support in the senior English classes, plus the anchor and gap programs at Gloucester High School, 20 to 30 additional at-risk seniors. We support additional 15 to 20 um, Gloucester High students who are North Shore Community College bound. We impl implemented a FAFSA day, a financial aid day this year. So we're looking to continue to increase that. And we're partnering with Gloucester High, Rockport High School, Manchester Essex Regional High School on guidance. We continue to do that. And next slide. Other things that we're doing, we're working with North Shore Community College to look at the options to continue early college at Gloucester High School. Might that be a gateway to college program? There are several different programs that we're considering. We're developing a mentoring program at Gloucester High School in partnership with the Gloucester Education Foundation. That's gonna include a speaker series. One is coming up soon on um, what's changed in the college admissions landscape during the pandemic. We're, we partner with Gloucester Health Department. Nikki um, led this initiative with the reopening Gloucester Task Force on the Youth Subcommittee for Jobs. We partner with the Gloucester Health Department Attendance Improvement Committee, and we convene our community partners monthly because again, we wanna make sure that everyone's aware of all the programs that are out there so that the referrals can exist in a timely manner. And next slide. Okay, and with that, we'll turn it over to Nikki. All right. Hi everyone. Pin... Nikki, before you start, let me just pin you up so that everybody can see you. Go right ahead. Yeah, please share with us about the Compass Youth Program. All right, hello, welcome to my fake virtual living room. Um, my name is Nikki Marin and I'm the director of the Compass Youth Program at Action Inc. Um, so just a bit of background about our program. Um, we serve students who are ages 16 to 24 who have withdrawn from high school and are looking for help um, with getting their high set, which is basically the same thing as the GED. Um, and we find that often students didn't withdraw due to academic issues but due to other barriers such as housing instability, lack of transportation, um, mental health needs that are being unmet, um, or food insecurity and needing to work to help pay the bills. Um, so while we're helping students study for their high set, we're simultaneously working with them to help overcome some of these barriers. Um, thankfully, we're able to refer many of them to our partners in Kayak to help overcome these barriers. So for example, um, if someone's food insecure, we'll refer them to the Open Door Food Pantry. If a student um, has mental health needs and needs to be meeting with a counselor, we'll connect them with Children's Friend and Family, um, both of whom are members of Kayak. 
Um, so we find that often once a student has overcome these barriers, they feel more prepared to either enter the workforce or re-engage in additional schooling, be that either job training or um, going into college. Um, and we help them kind of determine which path might be the best fit for them. So next slide. Uh, so Kayak helps with the job prep and um, college readiness in a number of ways. Um, and this is true both for Compass students as well as students graduating from traditional high school. Um, so one of the ways that Kayak has been able to help is through increased referrals. Um, many Kayak member organizations offer job training programs. And I think that before Kayak started, we kind of all knew that these training programs existed, but they weren't at the forefront of our minds because um, we weren't hearing about them all the time. So now that we're communicating with each other regularly, we're much more likely to refer, but not only refer, make it a warm handoff and ensure that there's a strong connection and that the student is going to feel cared for and safe going to whatever that training program might be. Um, and another part of that that's kind of worth noting is that through Kayak, we had heard uh, a lot from guidance counselors that there was a really big need for um, trades trainings. So based on that feedback and some other data that we've seen, um, Action Inc. recently lost, launched a Trades Gateway training program um, to help address this need. So we're, we're being able to kind of pivot and address needs in real time. Um, and another great thing that we've been able to do is um, send more students to internships, which Joanne is going to be talking about more in a bit. Um, but that's been really powerful because all of the member organizations are really seeing a need for that. And so those connections are able to take place on a broader scale. Um, we've been able to share resources with one another. So for example, as Laura had mentioned, Kayak had had a speaker from the Economic Opportunity Center through North Shore Community College talk about the FAFSA application process. So they not only invited their clients, but all of the students and clients that everyone in Kayak works with, um, because there's just no reason not to invite more people to a Zoom meeting. Um, it's not like you're gonna run out of donuts or anything. So invite away, share away. Um, ultimately, the goal is for us to be working together to build a stronger community. And we've approached a lot of trainings like this. Similarly, we've done the same thing with um, teen leadership trainings because ultimately we want all of the youth on KPAN to, to have those strong leadership skills, not just the youth who are in our particular organization. Um, all right, next slide. Sarah had also asked me to share a bit about some of the challenges that we've seen this year. Um, so it's been really helpful to have the regular kayak meetings in order to share with each other the needs that we're seeing in youth and then respond quickly. Um, it's probably no surprise some of the challenges that we have seen. Um, those are increased challenges with mental health and loneliness, um, plummeting school attendance, um, more students considering a gap year, uh, and just in general, the, uh, we're seeing the need for the importance to share accurate health information um, and COVID information right now. And so we've been able to work together to quickly address these challenges. Um, and I'll just speak to one of those things so I don't keep you all day. Um, but we've, uh, when we heard that the school attendance was really an issue, um, <clears throat> as Laura had mentioned, we pulled together a subcommittee to uh, start addressing that. So that some of the things that we're doing are creating a resource page, both for school personnel as well as parents. So if there is a student who is um, struggling with attendance for whatever reason, there's paths to know where those different resources to help are. Um, if a student does end up withdrawing from school, there's a very smooth referral into the Compass program um, so that they can still stay on track with their college and career path. Um, we've also brainstormed as a work group um, how to kind of work upstream, so to speak, to prevent attendance issues um, and thinking about even ways that we can go to the middle school level to start working to prevent high school attendance issues later on. Um, and we're working together to figure out solutions. So for example, if there's, um, if transportation's an issue, where can we pull in um, the Mass Safe Routes to School to help address those um, transportation needs? So we really are kind of thinking of this from a community level. Um, and I guess what I, the takeaway message I'd like to give is just that um, through Kayak, we as community organizations and schools are no longer working in silos. As organizations, we're not alone, and therefore our youth are not alone, and they're not feeling alone, I don't think. Um, and we really do feel like a stronger community because of this group. Those are my slides.
Thank you so much, Nikki. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over next to Joanne and then finally to Ken. We just have a few more perspectives that we want to bring you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pin you now, Joanne, um, and uh, we'll be able to move right on to your slide. All right, go ahead, Joanne, and introduce yourself. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I'm Joanne Levitt and I work for Leap for Education and I'm the Gloucester Summer Internship Mentor Mentorship Program Coordinator. And um, I just wanna thank you so much for inviting us today. And I am so thrilled to be here to talk about kayak because it has just been such an amazing experience. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what a successful internship mentorship situation might look like um, for us and for you um, out there. Um, so just to start off, you know, for many Cape Ann youth and young adults, especially those in LEAP's target demographic, an internship is going to be a very first job experience. And research has shown that students who work during their school years tend to do better in school and have an easier time finding future employment. Um, however, because this is a first job experience, many will need a lot of hand-holding and mentoring. So some companies might be a little nervous about hiring interns on their own. Um, this is why a lot of companies have been incredibly enthusiastic about hiring interns and volunteering as mentors in collaboration with LEAP. Um, we, we've partnered for a number of years with the Open Door Food Pantry, and then as well as all the other supporting partners at Kayak. So if you collaborate with us for our summer internship mentorship program, we support the employer or mentor and our involvement comes totally free of charge. Um, the program in Gloucester started about five years ago with just six students. And this year we're up to 35 participants and I really give a lot of credit to just the unbelievable Kayak network. Um, the vast majority of them are in our target demographic more so than any other year. So we're really also being more effective getting um, the students we want to get. Um, so these are economically disadvantaged, English language learners, and first generation to college. Um, so the need is clearly there. And we even had to start a wait list and slow down our marketing and advertising in April. So if I hadn't done that, we may have even ended up with, you know, who knows how many participants. So I really see in the future huge potential. Um, although we used to do in-person internships pre-COVID, last summer and this summer, we shifted to a virtual model. Since we're gonna stick with this model this summer, that's what I'm gonna focus on today. Um, so even if you don't partner with us, there are elements that I'm gonna talk about that you may wanna include in any internship with youth that you are involved in. Um, our summer program has two main components. So there's a nine hour virtual work week and also, also weekly Zoom two hour workshops on career, college search and life skills topics. And we, I think we could go to the next slide uh, on that. So for the work component, uh, community mentor volunteers are matched one-to-one -one with mentees to choose a project based on shared interests. And our mentees are anywhere this year from age 14 to 24. So the mentor role is part coach and part role model. Each mentor meets with the participant once a week on Zoom for an hour and guides them on a project that the mentee then works on independently eight hours a week over the six weeks. Having the mentee learn about project management over those six weeks is really key to the process. Uh, when the mentors meet the mentees, they follow a, a very clear template that LEAP has provided with tasks and goals and resources. Uh, the mentor does have to be prepared to start at a pretty basic level and build upon skills every week. Um, patience, creativity, life perspective, and a sense of humor are all important things that a mentor <laughs> would wanna to bring to these meetings. And also, even if they have fewer years of work experience, um, mentors who are very early on in, the, in their careers, you know, even first or second job, can be wonderful. They can be very inspirational, great cheerleaders, and they've just been through a lot of this, so they're very relatable. 
Um, as an additional layer of support, um, so we've got the work, um, then we also have um, what we call facilitation. So LEAP, the Open Door staff and other kayak members check in with mentors and mentees every week to make sure no one falls through the cracks. And I've had people say to me, they wouldn't have made it through the program without that, um, especially with all the technical challenges. Um, we also provide a lot of resources like TED Talks, podcasts on grid and resilience, YouTube videos, um, books, all kinds of things. Um, as the mentor takes the young person under their wing and shows an interest in the mentee, they become a trusted adult. And you see such a change in the participant, even just over the six weeks, it's amazing. Um, some examples of the hands-on projects the participants will be working on this summer. Um, we have a professional carpenter who's volunteered to be a mentor. So he's doing a building project with a student who is interested in the trades. Um, we have someone um, working with the Sawyer Free Library, developing more teen resources for diverse student populations. Um, we have, there's always a lot of interest in animals. So we have a small group of students working with a mentor making animal toys for sheltered pets at Cape Ann Animal Aid. Um, we have social media marketing for a summer Gloucester community wide event that one student is working on. Um, and you know, the list goes on. Um, this, the last piece is the workshops that we run. And through kayak support, uh, this year, Project Adventure staff will be helping to run our Zoom workshops, and they're going to be doing all kinds of exercises on soft skills, such as team building, problem solving. Um, we also have speakers every week at these workshops. So for an example, Chelsea Cody, who's the head of HR at Gordon Seafood, is going to come talk at one session about um, job interviewing and resume writing. And the most fun workshop is the last one at the end of the summer where all the participants present their projects. And it's just amazing to see some of them who literally could not say a word on Zoom for the first couple of weeks, you know, they were just absolutely phenomenal making these presentations. Um, and so, you know, each participant actually gets paid by their mentor or Employer, or they get a $500 stipend and school credit if they complete all these requirements. And, you know, this is a big incentive. There's so many distractions on the North Shore with beach and um, all kinds of things. So um, that's, that's a big piece. Um, even if we go back to the in-person internship model next summer, we plan to keep the virtual model available because it's been so successful, especially some students who have social anxiety or transportation and distance is an issue. It doesn't have to be when everything's on Zoom. Um, it's also a smaller time commitment for the employer than taking on an intern. Um, it's only an hour a week. And I do have to say, according to our surveys last year, the mentors learned just as much as the mentees. <laughs> and actually all had such an amazing time. So that was just a win-win situation. Um, so in closing, I just wanna say, you know, it takes a village and Kayak has just been a huge support in every area. And I, again, think this has so much to do with why we've grown, recruiting participants, recruiting mentors, recruiting speakers, and much more. So it's been an amazing example of the power of teamwork. Thanks, Joanne. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up Ken. Uh, Ken is our last panelist um, from, the, from the chamber. Ken, I would love for you to share your perspective um, uh, from participating in Kayak. Um, and you know, I think one of the important things about this has been the cross-sector relationships. So if you could just share a little bit from your perspective, folks would love to hear from you. Thanks, Sarah. I'm happy to do that. And, and thank you all. I, I do not have slides. Um, and I'll keep this brief. We heard a lot about Kayak, which is just a terrific program. And it's my pleasure to support that program and, and all of the, the nonprofits here that are, that are core to it. Uh, we've been involved in, in education, educator roles for literally for, for decades. The Cape Ann Chamber is going on 100 years old next year. <clears throat> and um, working with our youth is one of our priorities. And we do that through what we call a business education collaborative. Laura mentioned it. Laura and I 
have been working together since I've been here. And uh, it's just such a pleasure working with you, Laura, and everything that you do at Wellspring, including, of course, Kayak. So with our Business Education Collaborative, BEC, we meet monthly um, with all the local schools on Cape Ann. And there are, are three systems, as was mentioned earlier, and Essex Tech. And the reason for the tech is, is important because we have a number of our students that go to Essex Tech and they really are representing the trades uh, in a way that our other schools are not. And, and the trades are such an important part, frankly, of kayak and, and what we're doing overall. And, and I don't think they get the attention that they deserve. There are incredible career opportunities in the trades. And that's one of the reasons that, that I'm so happy to support Kayak in particular is there's a, there's a group of students that, that basically could fall through the cracks. And it's, it's programs like Kayak that looks out after those students and provides them for continuing education opportunities, whether that's through North Shore Community College or other local schools, or um, sets them up with these amazing opportunities in the trades. And our perspective, of course, is from the business side. So we're a relatively large chamber. We represent the four Cape Ann communities, but we have members from around the North Shore. And, uh, and our businesses right now coming out of the pandemic are hurting for workers, especially uh, Cape Ann has a, has a large and, and growing every year tourism uh, segment. It's, it's one of the things that we also spend a lot of time doing with our visitor centers and we just received 75,000 um, copies of our new Cape Ann guide, and we're starting to distribute that. And our hospitality industry right now is hurting for employees. And, and one of the ways that, that we've been working with Kayak and the partners here on this call is to put together just grassroots um, job opening um, lists. And so we can put that together. We, we know who's looking for jobs on the business side, and then we have um, a lot of folks who are looking for, for to fill those jobs, including our young people, and we can help make those connections. And so Kayak, as was mentioned earlier, is one of the ways that, that we've gone about doing that. Um, other things that we do in the BEC is, is we do actually a, a career and college fair. So it's this is not your standard college fair. We, we do get 75 colleges in. We do this at Gloucester High at the Fieldhouse, but we bring in the the business community, including our nonprofits. And we talk about what do we do in the career fields? And so the idea is, yes, if you wanna, you wanna meet half a dozen of, of colleges that you may be going to, that's great. But talk to people in finance, talk to people in the nonprofit world or in the trades and find out what does it really mean to pursue an education um, in this career field? What, what, what comes out on the other side of that? And, to demonstrate the opportunities that are available regionally um, on Cape Ann. And as I'm sure most of you know, Cape Ann, the largest communities are actually, we're, we're an island. Uh, we, yes, we do have good rail and we've got a, a, great, um, a great transit system connecting us, uh, 128, but we're at the end of the line, or as we like to say, we're at the beginning of the line. And it's really important that our young people know what opportunities there are after they get a, a uh, continuing education or coming out of high school, there are incredible employment opportunities here. And this career and college fair that we've run, I think we're going on our fifth year. Of course, we didn't do it, excuse me, didn't do it last year, uh, but we'll be gearing up for it in the spring of next year um, to help to inform our young people on these incredible opportunities that are here um, in the Cape Ann and, and surrounding area. Um, other things that we do is, is to support um, internships and mentorships exactly as was talked about here um, through the kayak program and also through BEC. Uh, LEAP is, is done incredible work as uh, Joanne was talking. And, and so there are instances where we'll have young people that will want to do certain types of internships and we don't have a business match. And so we can provide that business match. The, the chamber is involved in this as a supporting organization and the connector to the business community. And so whether it's internships, mentorships, job placement, um, opportunities with, uh, with meeting these different colleges um, and learning about careers, 
really the chamber is there to support primarily these nonprofits who uh, who have just spoke and our schools and um, and to connect um, these organizations with our business community. Also sponsorships. A lot of the funding for this work comes from the business community and we can help to make those connections as well. So, so that's it in a nutshell. Um, we're just very pleased to be part of, of this terrific effort. And, and I know um, all of these ladies very well uh, in our work in Kayak and, and the Business Education Collaborative. And it's, it's truly a pleasure in supporting uh, the nonprofit organizations and towards the betterment of our, of our youth and ultimately towards the fulfillment of these jobs, whether it's now or at some point in the future, you know, we're all looking to create the next generation of, of workers, whether they're leaders or they're, they're working to fill positions inside these businesses. That's, that's our goal. And this is one terrific way to do that. That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Ken. I really appreciate that. So I've repinned all of our panelists. I, I, we don't have a ton of time for Q&A, but I would like to ask a couple of questions that have been sent in. Um, and so I'm gonna ask two. Um, uh, the second question, actually, I would love to do sort of rapid fire style for time's sake. Um, so I would ask each of you um, uh, for, for this is gonna be the second question. So you have a minute to think about it while someone answers the first question. Um, so the second question is gonna be, if you had to sum up your experience of um, working as a collaborative. So think back to the days when you were really working more in silos and then think forward to today where you're really working more as a collaborative. If you could think of like one phrase that describes the difference of working as a collaborative versus as an individual, um, we'll do a rapid fire go around where each of you has about, you know, 15 seconds or so. Um, so be thinking about your answer to that question, because I think people would really appreciate hearing from each of you. Why is it more effective to work as a collaborative? Um, before we do that, I would love to have, um, you know, Nikki, you come to mind, or perhaps Laura, whoever wants to take this one. I wonder if you would think of a student that has been served through, um, sort of uh, been with the program since over the last couple of years. And I wonder if you could give an example of someone um, who was referred either through the guidance department or through Compass, um, and maybe just give our listeners a little bit of a sense of, um, could you walk them through from the point of, I don't know what my next steps are to, um, I've actually engaged on a career track, um, and maybe just talk us through a little bit about what made the difference or sort of how that, um, that uh, coaching relationship developed over time, how folks got connected into a program. If you could just sort of give us a story to bring it to life, and I would look to probably Laura or Nikki, whoever maybe has someone who pops into their mind as sort of a good example of um, the power of the collaborative. Nikki, do you want to go ahead? I the one that jumps to mind was for me was the one that I mentioned a little bit before. But um, do you have someone else in mind? I mean, I have a few students in mind, and I can just very briefly give a couple of stories. I mean, we had one Compass grad who um, didn't feel ready to go to college after getting her high set. Um, and then she went to Wellspring for their college readiness program. And she was so excited to tell me that she's going to be enrolling in North Shore Community College um, in the fall. Uh, so stories like that are happening a lot. I have several students right now who are really wanting to go and um, figure out their next job path. And they're going to leap for their internships. Um, and we have another graduate who... Um, and, you know, these are students who had dropped out of high school, another graduate who just completed um, a full year in college. Um, she got a 4.0 and uh, she got the business ed collaborative um, uh, scholarship through the chamber with Ken. So you can really see all the organizations working together with each other. Those are some great uh, additional examples. Thank you. So I'd love to do a Oh, go ahead, Laura. One of the, um, a, a current example is, you know, again, a lot of talk about the trades and the need for, um, you know, the interest in students in the trades. And currently, because Action has this new trades program, with the students that we work with at the high school, we've referred, I think, one or two students to Nikki because they, you know, because college is not for everybody, truly, or maybe just not for everybody right now. And they're really walking their path and there is a need for, you know, trained professionals in the trades. And so we'll cross pollinate, we'll send students to Nikki for the trades program. We, North Shore Community College is also a strong partner of ours. And we have another student that we're in the process of having them 
um, sign up for the, um, the CNC Machinist Program that's sponsored by Mass Hire and North Shore Community College at Gloucester High School. So there are lots of, lots of um, examples of referrals. Great. So I'm gonna go around to each of you. If you had a word or a phrase, really truly very brief, um, that would just pinpoint the experience of working as a collaborative, um, I would love to, Ken, do you happen to have one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In, in, in a word or two, I, I would I would say higher efficiency or, or time saving. Mm. And the reason for that is as opposed to making calls to everybody individually, we just get it done you know, very quickly. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Joanne, do you have one? Uh, I would just say a network of pipelines. Every need that I've had, I have had Laura or Nikki or Ken jump in with a lot of resources. Yeah. Laura, do you have one? I would say going along with what Ken said, non-duplicative, um, efficient, more efficient, youth focused, better informed. Yeah, and finally, Nikki. I'd say we reach our goals both um, individually and for community better together. Yeah, I love all of that. Yeah, and, and mine really continues to be resilience, right? Being ready to, to tackle whatever challenge comes up. And I'm so glad that you were all here when the pandemic hit, of course, because um, I think it prepared us to serve students better. So um, I think we've heard that from the schools and we've heard that from each of you, so thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and add um, the, uh, my co-host back in, Emily, um, and pull off our panelists. Um, we're just so ha happy and thankful that folks have um, have joined us for today. I would invite you just as we've all shared um, our takeaways from today, we would invite each of you to feel free to um, add your takeaway into the chat or to chat it over to any of us um, after. If, if there's a thought that continues to stick with you after today, feel free to, to drop it over to us. We would love to know what your takeaways are from today as well. Um, so, um, uh, Emily, I want to go back to you because this has been such a great uh, project we've been able to hear from today. Maybe you want to share your takeaway and then ways that people can get involved if they're interested. Sure. Thanks, Sarah. I have learned so much. I'm still digesting and processing, but I think I just love how many two-way streets there are, um, both you know, sort of between the organizations. And then I love sort of this idea that didn't even occur to me that it's like, well, this is really helpful for businesses too. This, we're investing in the whole community, not just in youth. Um, and, and so I love that um, kind of symbiotic relationship that a lot of our panelists were describing. I also have to say, I have a soft spot um, for reaching this idea that we need to start reaching out to middle school students and get started earlier, um, helping ensure that students have access to the resources that they need and the supports that they need. Um, I think that a lot of the research that's coming out in education outcomes right now suggests that the younger you can intervene, um, the more likely you are to have a positive impact on young people. And, um, that will lead me to my next point. You all are so busy and thank you so much for making the time to be part of this important conversation. Um, we are so grateful for your thoughtfulness, your input, and just for your compassion. And we would love to keep the conversation going as Sarah has mentioned. Um, please feel free to reach out to her. I'm sure I think Sarah is gonna pop her contact information into the chat so that you can shoot her an email. Um, just, Jacobs, whose email was in the evite for this invitation. Um, and Jess, if you don't mind maybe popping your email into the chat as well, just so people can find it easily, please, please, please reach out to them. I can assure you they are both fantastic individuals who are always available, willing to listen and encourage people to get involved. I don't want you to feel like the only thing that talks around here is money. Um, and if you're looking to have some fun on a sunny June Monday, uh, as I mentioned earlier on Monday, June 21st, we have our first annual Drive to Thrive golf tournament, uh, which will be at Myopia Club in Hamilton, which is a awesome course. Um, there's still opportunities to join as foursomes or even sponsors. So please um, just shoot an email to Sarah or Jess if that's something that speaks to you. And and with that, I will just say thank you again for caring, for showing up, and let's keep the momentum moving in the right direction. Thanks so much, Emily. Have a nice day, everybody. <laughs>